What's cooking, Juventus fans? Welcome back to your old lady's favorite YouTube channel. Today, Juventus secured three more points in their quest to remain at the top of City. Ah, when I say at the top, I mean the top four. I know, I know, when it comes to the Scudetto, you all don't want to hear about it. But as it stands right now, there are players that performed, and let's see how they stack up when it comes to what Juventus need to maybe move a little bit forward. Stick with us. We'll do these player ratings now. <laughs> Ciao, ragazzi. Welcome back to the Bianca Neri Zone. My name is Justin Sovro. Today, it's Sunday, March 20th, 2022. And, of course, I have your latest player ratings for all the players that played in the Salernitana-Juventus match. Uh, today, Juventus obviously brought home three more points, winning at home 2-0 over Salernitana. Let's be honest, a very bad Salernitana. But before we do anything, though, and before we get into these ratings, I'm going to ask you now to go ahead and smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and hit that bell icon to stay notified for all of our latest videos. Also, if you haven't considered, maybe consider right now as an opportunity to look at the idea of maybe becoming a member of the Beyond Canary Zone channel. There's a lot of stuff you get from it. It's really cool. Uh, you get also to join in on our Discord where we get to hang out and talk Juve 24-7. All the big stuff that, happens, that comes out there. And then also, you get an opportunity to jump on the channel with us in videos, talking Juve with myself, Alejandro, um, Ju Julian as well, and then of course our members that are on there as well. You've seen Davide on here. You've seen uh, Malik obviously helping out with videos. People like that. So it's really fun to really see our channel grow and to really grow in this community. The thing that we're doing here is community, and that's what's really uh, fun about it. All right. Let's just jump into these ratings and talk about the performance that was for Juventus against Salernitana. All right, first up, let's talk about Wojciech Chesney and his performance that he gave today for Juventus. He gets a 6.5 rating from me today for his performance. He played the full 90 minutes, but let's be honest, during the very first half of the match, I would say this, he basically could hang on his goal and have a sip of an espresso and just enjoy his time because he wasn't really getting challenged all that much. He had a lot of time to himself. Salernitana, not a real big threat, right? My apologies. Uh, anyway, as it went in there in the first half, he basically was just hanging out. He could drink. He could do whatever he wanted in goal. Um, but then in the second half, he started to get peppered a little bit more with some shots. I think ended up actually overall, there were 12 total shots taken um, by both Juventus and uh, by that, I don't mean total, I mean 12 and 12, so 24 total. But 12 taken by Salernitana on the goal, or not on the goal, sorry. I'm misspeaking already. What I meant to say is 12 total. Uh, he, had a, he had a few on goal, but here's what he was able to do in that amount of time. So he did a little bit, um, do a little bit more. He had four saves total. He had two that were high claims, two saves from inside the box. He had four accurate long balls and one aerial duel one as well in his performance. So he gets a 6.5 rating for me today, keeping another clean sheet. Let's move it on, though. And let's talk about DeShilio and his performance. And I want to give some credit because I think especially at a time where you had you're missing a couple guys. Obviously, Chiellini played in the first half, but you had to move up. You had Danilo moved up into the midfield. Uh, you had uh, Luca Pellegrini and DeShilio, two lesser valued guys for Juventus playing today. And I think they both did fairly well. I give DeShilio 6.5 rating for his performance overall. And one of the notes that I have actually is following the match. I don't know if it was this match that did it, but uh, Mancini has called up DeShilio to play for the Italian national team here um, during the international break that's coming up. So that's kind of big. Obviously, maybe some UV fans may not be super happy to hear about, hey, he could go out there and potentially get injured. Uh, but again, DeShilio was really not our... He's not he's not the um, most integral piece, but he's been a very useful piece throughout the season. So if he were to get injured, obviously, that would be a big deal. Anyway, he gets a 6.5 rating for me today in his performance. He had one assist. He had one interception, one tackle, one ground duel, one... Um, two key passes, two accurate crosses, one accurate long ball, one big chance created as well in today's performance. So definitely want to give him his credit where it is due. Next up, of course, we're going to talk about Matias Delict, who's always, you know, it's like the most reliable player to me out there. It's always Matias Delict in his performance. He gets a 6.5 rating today overall. The defense did really well, obviously against the team of lesser quality. Again, I want to keep saying that because I don't want to go over the top when I'm giving these ratings out. 6.5 rating. He had three clearances. He had one interception, one tackle, one ground duel, one, two aerial duels, one, seven accurate long balls, and one shot on target. So obviously some things that you like to see out there, especially the long balls, because you usually only used to Benucci doing that and delivering that um, there from that position, but it's good to see the link do it as well. 
Speaking of Benucci, not him, but his counterpart, Giorgio Chiellini today played for the first half of the match. Um, he got a six rating for that first 45 minutes in which he did play. Um, he had two clearances, one ground duel, one, uh, and one shot blocked as well. Um, one of the things I just wanted to note that was interesting that he did play, I honestly thought that Chiellini would not play at all, really, if we're being real. I know it's Salerno Town, and I know it's not a big-time match, but at the same time, just given that he's been sitting out and he's been out for a while, obviously recovering from injuries, but I was kind of surprised that they utilized him just because we know, I think right now, it's pretty clear that Juventus, and maybe when, Chiell when it comes to Chiellini and Bonucci's health, they've been kind of allowing, or maybe the players themselves have focused on these upcoming two weeks for the Italian national team. Um, I know people have different thoughts when it comes to this. I know they'd be frustrated, and I'm frustrated as well. If that is the situation, and these guys could be playing, but they're not playing because they're trying to rest up and keep healthy for the Italian national team, especially against the mats like Villarreal, which I'm still fuming over, still pissed off about how that played out. Uh, you need everybody all hands on deck if they could play. Dybala, I've been crushing him. So at the same time, uh, Chiellini or Benucci deserve the same kind of criticism if that's the reason they didn't play. Anyway, he comes out at, at, at halftime, uh, play the first half of the match, you know, getting the rust off, doing all that. And I, But I also understand. I understand if you're Chiellini and Benucci that you want to be healthy <clears throat> for the Italian national team and you want to be able to play the best game that you can to ensure that you, that Italy qualify for the World Cup. I mean, I know that, that I know this is a Juve channel, but I talked about this since day one when I, when I launched this channel alongside Alejandro. That literally, what I was doing, or the reason that I'm a Juve fan and such a staunch Juve fan, all started with the Azuri. That's how it reached me. You see it on here on the side uh, with Del Piotto's uh, shirt and all that. It's very important to me. And I, I'll be honest, as an Italian uh, national team fan, I can't go almost a decade, over a decade, almost 12 years without seeing the Italian national team playing in a World Cup. It, it's unheard of to me, honestly. It's ridiculous. So if they don't end up making it, I, 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 I understand they go all in on making this World Cup. Right now, um, the last time they played in it, what was it, 2014? I was 24 years old. I was still spry in my 20s. Now I'm in my 30s. And if they don't make it this time... I'll end up being 36 by the next time that they make it, which is, it's hard to believe. <laughs> so anyway, they need to be able to make it. They need to do it. So get it done, guys. Come back and finish the season strong. Um, anyway, let's move it on, though, to Luca Pellegrini. I gave him a six rating overall for Danny's Danny performance. He had a yellow card, and that's why I want to talk about a little bit about the yellow card situation there were more yellow cards in this game than there were goals. Obviously, that's not really crazy to do. But at the same time, you had three times as many yellow cards. Uh, you had four on Juventus' side, two on Salernitana, one on Juventus' side that included uh, Max Allegri. Uh, Luca Pellegrini got his, I believe, was for – actually, I think the uh, reasoning that they gave that yellow card uh, was for simulation. So, whatever. Uh, anyway, his uh, – let's see. Overall, though, his performance, I thought he played pretty well there in his position, especially in the, second, the first half for sure. Uh, he gave him a six rating. He had one clearance. He had one ground to a one, two for two on aerial duels, one. He had one key pass, two accurate crosses, five accurate long balls, one shot on target, one shot off target as well. Let's continue it on, and let's talk about uh, Quadrado today and his performance. I gave him a six rating overall. I know a lot of people probably a little bit higher on him, and I probably should give him a little bit more credit. Um, but I just, I, it's so frustrating at the end of the game. And this, it is the old this quadrado that I've been growing to see lately. This quadrado that literally kills drives. That's not the quadrado I'm used to. I'm used to the quadrado that's, that's always reliable. That's the guy that's always creating for the team. That's always doing stuff, moving the ball toward the goal. And he just, he hasn't been doing that. He hasn't been doing that at nearly the pace or the level that I that Juventus need him to do it at. And that's where I'm frustrated. Um, I gave him a six rating overall today's performance. You could argue with me it should be higher. Let's see. Let's go through the stats and I'll tell myself how wrong I am, right? So uh, he had four key passes. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good four key passes. I'll, I'll give you that. That's not a good start, Justin. One accurate cross, six accurate long balls. So those are some and one big chance created. Two successful dribble attempts, six round duels, one, one aerial duel, one, and two tackles. So, I mean, nothing crazy, crazy, but some really good when it came to key passes, 
Um, some of those uh, long balls, those are all really good stats. But at the same time, there's just certain things that I saw him do when it came to um, continuing drives. And that's why I'm frustrated because right now, a lot of what I talked about in the uh, instant reaction earlier was my, my issue with it being that Vlahovic is on an island right now by himself, trying to create, trying to do stuff. And he has nobody to help him. We don't have guys like Chiesa. We don't have McKinney out there um, who were willing to be uh, seriously attacking, seriously going after uh, after the goal, moving the ball inside the box, getting something done. Right now, we don't have that. Right now, we have Cuadrado and Rabio, who right now are a bit trigger shy. I mean, Rabio is Rabio. He doesn't even want to get into the final third. But right now, um, Cuadrado has been a little bit more uh, trigger shy than I've been used to him being uh, when it comes to that. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, we can get uh, some more help and assist from that. Will it be Cuadrado? We'll see. Also, I'm interested to see how he can, um, when I say improve his graces when it comes to trying to, I mean, you want this new deal with Juventus, right? You want this another, a couple more seasons, a couple more, more million euros, right? You're going to need to uh, hopefully just prove something in this time. I, I never understand why they end up being so complacent during this time. Uh, anyway, then Danilo, I want to talk about his performance today. I gave him a seven rating. Was I a little too generous? You let me know, but I really liked what I saw from Danilo today. He always steps it up in the big moments. He's really, really become a very reliable player. We talked about so many people who've been complaining about the um, – the trade that was done between him and Cancelo and going to uh, Manchester City. I think you've just got a really good piece when it comes to what Danilo has done game in and game out for the club. Seven rating today. He stepped up, moved up in the midfield, and he had a pretty good performance today. He had a key pass. He had four accurate long balls. He had one successful dribble tip, six ground duels, one. He had two clearances, three block shots, three interceptions, and four tackles as well. Again, I just like to give credit to Danilo. I really like what I see from him here as of late. A guy I'm not so hot on. <laughs> Let's talk about Archer today. Um, I gave him a 5.5 rating today. Uh, maybe that's a little bit harsh. Um, you could argue that with me. But at the same time, again, I'm just frustrated because we saw a little peak. A little, a little. Um, the groundhog came out real quick. Just a little peak uh, of, of some brilliance. Of some stuff that he can do. Um two games ago for Juventus when he was just, you know, weaving in and out between guys. He was, he put, I mean, he, he put the nitrous on. I don't know what he did, but somehow he was looking speedy. He was looking maneuverable between defenders and all that. And right after right after that against Villarreal and then now back at this, he's back on just slow on the ball. He's way too slow. He's a turtle. He's he's ancient at this point. Um, so that's why he gets a 5.5 rating for me today in his performance. Um, Going through stats, no key passes, no crosses, no long balls, no creative stuff, and that's what frustrates me. No shots on target. He had one successful dribble. He had three ground duels, one, and one tackle. Like, that's not good enough. That stat sheet is not good enough from a midfielder. You're expecting to do so much more, either defensively or in trying to create anything. You were just basically, you existed, and that's about all he did today. So yeah, actually, I feel pretty. Um, I feel pretty right in my five point five rating today. Not good enough. Um, then we go to move to Rabio, and I understand I have my biases, so I might be a little bit too harsh on Rabio. But again, a lot of it's the same stuff that I'm always complaining about. He gets a five point five rating today in his performance. He had two accurate long balls. He had a shot off target. He had three successful dribbles. He did have seven ground duels, one, so credit there. I I need to look at what he does defensively because he does do some good things defensively. Good, he, good things. You know what I'm saying? He did some good things. He did get a yellow card uh, for one of his motions earlier. Um, what else did he have here? Sorry, I got a little bit distracted. One interception and four tackles as well. So defensively, he does fine. It's just, again, all of my all of my frustration comes from the moving the ball for the offensive attacking um, ideology, the stuff like that that he just isn't doing for me. Uh, and I'm sure it's only exacerbated by my frustration of seeing Vlaovic a man on an island, a man alone, trying to make anything happen. And he just doesn't have the pieces around him, especially right now with the um, the injuries and the you know all the stuff that's going on right now. He just doesn't have the help. Um, so Rabio gets a 5.5 rating for me today. If you disagree with me, you can let me know in the comment section 
down below. Be nice. Uh, actually, you don't have to be nice. Be mean. That's fine. Next up, we have Paulo Dybala, and I gave him a 6.5 rating today for his performance. It was a shock to me that Dybala actually decided to show up in today's match, especially given his uh, disappearance in matches that matter. But I guess it shouldn't really be that shocking given that it's Slurantana. It's an easy game. It's an easy win. So Dybala decided, I'm going to get out of bed today, and I'm going to show up, and I'm going to play today. I may have a goal early. I might get a goal early for you guys, and then we'll chill out. But um, I don't want to do too much. I really just want that 10 million euros. And then we can go home. I know people are not happy because we've been harsh on Dybala lately. And I'm not a Dybala fanboy, but I do like Paulo Dybala a lot. Dybala is one of my favorite players, but he has frustrated me a lot. Um, given the situation when it comes to the renewal, the will you, will he, won't he, will he, won't he, the um, stuff that's been going on. Obviously, there's things that are in Juventus's end that have not been uh, done maybe appropriately, especially because we should kind of believe. My thought is that, you know, once you put that on the table the offer in october professionally you probably shouldn't change it i don't care if he agreed or disagreed to it uh if he's totally disagreed fine but if there just wasn't a signature at that time i think at that point you've got to do right by your player and keep offering him the same amount of amount of money though i am very frustrated because i'm just sick of the injury injury issues that always seem to persist in big games where he doesn't show up and he doesn't play and that's why my frustrations are out there aired out there because I don't need Dybala to play against Salernitana. I don't need him in these lower tier matches. I need him in the big time matches. I need him showing up. I need him scoring goals like he did earlier today. That's when I need him. So he gets 6.5 uh, ratings for me today. He had that goal early in the match, as I said. He had two shots on target, one shot off target. Obviously, the one goal that he did miss was just unfortunate just because he missed a big time opportunity in the breakaway and just... You know, unfortunately, and, and that's why it says one big chance missed. Uh, one key pass, one accurate long ball, one big chance created as well. Four ground duels, one and three tackles as well in today's performance. And then, of course, we're talking about Dushan Vlavic. Dushan Vlavic, who gets a 7.5 rating for me today uh, in his performance. He played the full 90 minutes. He had that goal there in the, I think it was the 29th minute. Um, overall, he had one goal, one assist, three shots on target. One shot blocked. He had one big chance missed. He had one key pass, one accurate cross, five ground duels, one, one aerial duel, one, um, and as well, and he had offsides as well. Um, I give him a lot of credit um, when I do these ratings because I see him. I see him fighting. I see him out there, like I said, a man alone, a man on an island, isolated from everybody else, getting the ball, like, He'll get the ball into the final third, and he's the only one out there doing anything. He's the only one making attempts, making any efforts to do anything to create some positive results for Juventus. And I feel for him right now. I'm very frustrated. I'm sure he he doesn't show it, and I give him a lot of credit. Obviously, he's only been here for a couple months now, but at the same time, he doesn't show the frustration that I have as a fan watching him try to do it all by himself without any help from the guys um, that are also wearing us today. It was yellow and blue uh, out there. They're just, they kind of, I don't know. Like I said, it's like this invisible force field that like Rabio and all these other players, they see that final third and they're just like, eh, I'm going to stay back here. I'm going to stay back here. You do your thing, Vlaovic. You do your thing. And then we'll come hang out later. You let me know how that worked out for you. That's why I'm frustrated. We need guys who are not afraid to get their, to get their hands dirty, to do whatever it takes in that final third, to give some assistance. Because otherwise, there's only so much uh, Vlavic can do. He can't run through three different guys on his own every single time. Um, So I gave him a 7.5 rating today for his performance. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's move it on, though. Let's talk about a couple of the guys on the on, that came off on the bench. Um, obviously, there's certain guys that I'm not going to talk about. Manetti didn't have enough playing time. Moise Ken, same situation, and even Bernadeschi after the 70th minute. I, I, I don't really, you know, when you're only playing like 20 minutes, it's hard for me unless you do anything really spectacular. So first up, we have uh, Daniele Rugani in his performance. He was serviceable once again, coming off for Chiellini. Uh, he had two clearances, one interception, one ground duel, one um, one accurate long ball as well. The one, thing, the one moment that did stick out is that Rugani, of course, had that one clearance that people, I didn't know what he was doing either, but he, um, he, Kicked the clearance. I think he cleared the ball off of his right leg, I believe. And then with the way he kicked it, it ricocheted off of his arm. I know Salernitana players and people like that were yelling and complaining, asking for a, you know a penalty or whatever. I mean, that's 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 incidental. It's incidental conduct. It's not something that's really 
That's that's going to be you're not going to get a, a penalty kick for that. That's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not. I don't know. I don't know what they're complaining about. I guess they thought they saw something else. But how else would the ball have been down here and gotten back up here unless it hit the ground that hard? And it wouldn't make sense. But anyway, that's the one thing he did. I know people were saying, "Oh, the old Rugani's back," uh, but I thought overall he did fine. That situation was not really something that was really his fault um anyway that's what he did today he gets a six rating for me today uh coming on in substitution for Chiellini and then our other option was uh Alvaro Marata and his performance he came into the um I think it was at the 58th minute mark uh played for played for about a, a little over a half hour um not a ton of stats really I gave him a six rating because one of the things I did like that I saw is that he was actually doing some of the dirty work with Vlaovic, trying to create something there in the end. He was the only other guy, and obviously, yes, he's the other attacker. He's the pairing attacker with him that's actually in that final third, but he was one of the only guys out there actually trying to help, trying to get, you know, get the ball, get the attention away, uh, move, so, spread some of those defenders out so that Vlaovic has some move to work with, or some room to work with to move around. And then also... <laughs> There was a moment where he and Vlaovic were moving the ball. They were moving it down the field. And this is where I had that frustration. And it got to Quadrado, and he literally just kicked it away to a defender. And it made no sense. Like, these guys are working their bleeps off. And then, then Quadrado out here just lays an egg. And I understand it's the end of the game. And a game that seems at this point out of hand for Salernitana. You're up 2-0. But, but like, treat it like it's a, like a, you know, it's like a tie game. Treat it like that. Like, I want to see some of that fire. Anyway, we've already talked about Quadrado We're on Manata. Uh, Manata's overall statistics of what he did today. Um, he had a ground duel one, and he had a tackle. Um, he had some um, attempts. Let's see, he had uh, 11 accurate passes. I think a lot of those were him trying to create with uh, Mar- uh, Alvaro, or Alvaro. Sorry, Vlahovic there at the end. Anyway, that's what he did today. Uh, and then the final one we really got to talk about, Max is like, I give him a five rating. Um could be worse. Could have been better. Uh, I was just was really hoping to see a little bit more from him. I was like, I was hoping to see guys like Manetti get more playing time today. Um, I didn't really understand some of the stuff that they did. Um, I really wish he would have gotten um, DiBala a little bit more. I mean, unless I understand wanting to not play him the full time, so that way he could be uh, be rested a little bit. If he is seriously coming off of an injury, but I'd like to see more there. I'd like to see him do something. With the midfield, and I know, you know, maybe at this point it is what it is. The midfield is what it is right now. When you're playing with Cordrado, Danilo, Archer, and Rabio, it's not a beautiful midfield by any means. That's like the opposite of what I want to see out there. Uh, but at the same time, I would like to see him do something, do something with these guys, or at least instill in them, take the fear away, and get them down into that final third, trying to create, trying to move stuff around for Vlavic. Just don't leave Vlavic on an island. That's if there's one thing to take away from this is stop leaving Vlavic alone. Help him. Give give my man some help. That's all I have to really say today. Is you know the defense did fine. They weren't really this. It's a bad team. Slurry Town is a bad team. They're not a good team. It's not going to be anything that you really are going to worry about long term. They like I said they got blown blown. I guess blown out's the term really to use. I use it for different sports, but they lost ten. Uh, at least by they, they gave up 10 goals to Inter this season. And Inter, I mean, even though Allegri said after this match that Inter are the favorites to win the Scudetto, I don't know what matches he's watching. Uh, I'd, I, 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 I'd agree with if you want to say Milan. If you want to say any of the, you know, Milan or Napoli, fine. But Inter right now are not impressive. Juve should catch them, and Juve should beat them in the next match. But at the same time, I've seen how Allegri teams work. Anyway... This is more the airing of grievances, stuff that I'm frustrated with, stuff that I want to see more from him. Do something with your midfield. Figure something out. You got to do something. You got to, or at least you just got to instill in them. Whatever it takes, don't be afraid to go forward and give my freaking guy some help. Anyway, that's that's it for today. Those are my thoughts when it comes to the players, the ratings, all the good stuff when it comes to that. Let me know your thoughts. Do you disagree? Did I just ramble on for way too long about nothing? Let me know that in the comment section down below. I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in as always. Make sure you hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe button. It really helps our channel to continue growing. And like I said, consider joining the member squad as well. You get a lot of cool stuff with that. And it's really cool to see you all join the community and get to know each of you uh, better. Uh, definitely, there is a difference in joining the member squad. I get to actually 
know you guys as people and it's really really cool um anyway guys like i said hit the like button all that good stuff if you haven't already make sure you follow beyond canary zone at beyond canary zone on twitter instagram facebook and also you can follow me at justin sofro on twitter as well i'll see you next time forza juve forza beyond canary <laughs>